Okay, uh, this is a good question too. There's always a point, sometimes several in my day, where I feel myself wanting to disengage with being present. I really have to fight through these moments and I usually give in to letting myself be distracted. Do you have any advice for staying present in regular life when half of you doesn't want to engage with it? Maybe you are already answering my question. Maybe I am. I don't know. Um, so here, here is something that isn't often talked about. And maybe this will speak to it. Maybe it'll be helpful for those of you here. Uh, there's a fine line between being type A, overworking, obsessive about this process and just doing it well. There is an extreme stress on intensity of practice. And I, I'm guilty of saying, you better figure this shit out now because you don't know how much time you have. You know, I, I do that um, because it's true. But we have to remember that this process works like any other thing and that sometimes you have to let go and just let distractions happen. The reason teachers are so, and myself included, are so forceful about the intention of it is because otherwise people will just dawdle and not really take it seriously and wait too long and, and so on. But, you know, you're a person who asked this question. Uh, she's a musician. We know this. Um, and we can take that example of, of, of music. You can't practice music 24 hours a day. At least I can't. Maybe you can. Even people who are professionals that practice eight to 10 hours a day, they still have to sleep. They still have to give their body time to readjust. They have to give their nerves time to catch back on. Um, and so while you can't be practicing music all the time, well, the rest of the time, you just do what you're going to do. Go for a run, watch TV, have some fun. And in that, in that period of time where you're not practicing music, your body is getting better at playing music. And I found this to be true all the time where um, maybe I'm spending a lot of time working out a, a piece that my fingers just can't quite get. And I'm just trying and I'm trying and I play for a few hours and then maybe I, I stop for a few days and I come back and as soon as I pick it up, wow, it's as though I got it. It just, it just comes out. Why? Because I did the practice and then I took the time to let my body and my nervous system catch up to the learning that went on. Because you have to develop these neural pathways. Uh, the same is true with exercise. Even people who are super fit, uh, they work out a lot, but they're not working out 24 hours a day. They recognize that there needs to be a period of time where they recover. And in that period of time when they recover, they're not continuously exercising. They're doing other things. But in that period of time, their body is getting stronger. Their body is re it's rebuilding itself. So when they go back to it again, they're better at it. The same thing is true for um, what we do here with this uh, spiritual practice. If you have a set period of time of study, of meditation, and you're, you're doing it, I mean, you're really doing it. You've set aside everything else. And during that period of time, you are just meditating or you are just reading the Bhagavad Gita and contemplating. Well, it's okay if at other points in your day, you just, uh, I like to play chess. So I'm on chess.com. Every now and then I get out my phone and I, I, I play a game with someone and am I sitting there thinking, I have to be aware this is a spiritual process. No, I'm just playing chess. Uh, or when I go for a hike, I'm just enjoying the hike and the conversation. In the back of my mind, I'm not constantly saying, but I have to be present and observe every reaction that I have. I, I'm not doing that because I've done the work earlier on and then I'm just letting it happen. That way, when you commit to something and you're letting things happen, uh, then the time that you're not doing it, the development continues because you have to have those periods of rest. Um, so I'm not saying, I'm not saying uh, let go of the practice of being present. Most definitely be present with what you're doing. So that's the key thing here. Being present doesn't necessarily mean you're just neurotically observing yourself all the time. Many people attribute it to like to being like that. Being present means you are engaged in what is happening right now, which means if right now you are playing cards, well, then that's what you are doing. So being present means you are playing cards. 
not you're playing cards and you're worrying about your bills and you're thinking about spiritual practice. It's no, you are playing cards. So if you want to go watch a TV show or a documentary or something, you just sit down and you just enjoy the TV show. Do you understand what I'm saying here? And does this help answer what you're getting at or what you want me to get at? Um, one thing that we can add too about this idea of being present and um, developing sattva is um, I don't think you've gone through this yet, but uh, I've done a course on uh, the Holy Science by Sri Yukteswar. And yes, it is on my schedule to offer that again. Um, it's taken some time to get through uh, classes and, and, and things that are offered at the moment. But in that course, there is a description of these, in a sense, these different states of consciousness and um, different aspects of reality. And so we have the physical aspect of reality, which is the hard stuff that you can touch and throw and, and hold on to. That's like the, the combination of the elements. Well, um, the next level from that is the, what they call the organs of action, which allow me to move this thing around. It's an organ of action movement. Um, being able to taste things, being able to touch things, to smell things. Those are the organs of action. So you can smell this thing, you can touch it, you can taste it. Uh, so your, your organs of action, that level of consciousness is working on this physical thing, the, the, uh, the object that the organs focus on. Well, above the organs of action are the senses, which is simply the awareness of the smell, the awareness of the feeling, the awareness of the taste, the awareness and so, of so on and so on. And when we look at the description of these, these levels, um, the gross, the elemental, the hard stuff is said to be tama, the, the level of tamas, guna, tamas, tamasic things. The level of uh, the organs of action where you get things done and move things around and, and do things to stuff to do things to the Thomas level, that's Rajas, that's Rajasic. Well, the Sattvic level is the ability to perceive, to witness, to just observe. So now you see why moving into that witnessing consciousness, uh, consciously, repeatedly, that is, re that is consistently immersing you in a Sattvic state. And that is why practices like uh, Vichara or even, what's that one practice? Um, the Buddhist practice that everyone loves, uh, Vipassana, that particular practice develops sattva uh, because it's moving you into that space of observation. So in your meditation, the more often you can pull back into the witness, and even if you smell something, if you don't get engaged in it, you just observe the smell. Or when you feel something in your body or otherwise, you just observe the feeling. Or you hear something, you're simply observing what you hear. You're not judging it. You're not getting engaged in it. Well, by doing that, you are automatically cultivating a sattvic state because that is the level of sattva. So that is why these awareness practices are so important, um, are so important um, to do because they're cultivating sattva. But as far as being present, um, you can be present with tamasic things. You can be present when you're trying to make something happen, which is rajasic. You can be present with observing things. Being present is simply doing one thing at a time, focusing on one thing at a time. Right now, in the back of my mind, I'm not thinking, oh, I'm observing Ryan uh, teaching. No, all I'm doing is speaking and teaching, and I'm not thinking about other things. So therefore, I am present, just like you are listening. And if you are listening and not really thinking about other things, even if you're relaxed about it, even if you're just hanging out and drinking some tea and you're comfy pajamas with your nice wool, uh, not wool, what's that really soft uh, cashmere blanket. Even if you're just in that pleasant little space and you're just paying attention, you're observing, um, engaged in the process, you are present. As long as you're not thinking about other things. So when you need to think about stuff, think about stuff and you're still present. So you can choose to think and be present. Just do that.